Okay, good morning everyone and um, welcome to class. Uh, good to see all of you. All of you looking very smartly dressed. The in-person students are all uh, all dressed up very, uh, the men are looking very handsome and the ladies very beautiful. Yes, they're having some um, uh, group snap today. So you should see all of the uh, in-person students, some of them in blazers and... <laughs> <laughs> All with, uh, and not only just looking smart, they're also smelling very good. So all per different aromas of uh, perfume here in this room. So <laughs> it's uh, it's good. Okay, um, let's begin. Uh, can one of you please lead us in prayer? Is the mic there? Ready? Yes. So lead us in prayer, please. Yes, Sean. Thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today for this, uh, to learn, Heavenly Father. Please help us learn your word, Heavenly Father. Help us understand your word, Heavenly Father. And uh, lead my mightly, Heavenly Father. And bless all those uh, present here, Heavenly Father. Thank you very much for bringing us all here, to, here today to learn about your word today, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, good morning, um, in-person students as well, and all our e-learning students. So good morning to... Um, there is Sri Radha, Arilla, Anthony, and Karen who's joined us. The others may join us later. Okay. Welcome. Thank you for uh, joining class on time. Okay. So last week we were looking at, um, you know, we are looking, we looked at, we studied about the deity of uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, we are looking at his humanity. So to understand Christ's humanity, we are trying to understand his uh, incarnation okay so we were looking at chapter 5 where we are trying to understand the incarnation of uh, Jesus Christ uh, incarnation means what what does incarnation mean yes sorry can you speak loud transforming what is incarnation Word becoming flesh, God becoming man. Simple, okay? God becoming man or God taking on the human form, the human nature, okay? So we were looking at uh, a, a few uh, passages in scripture. We are gaining a biblical perspective of his incarnation and uh, which is one of the good scriptures that we can show uh, which talks about the incarnation of Christ. Of Jesus Christ. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 and verse 14 and who is the word that is mentioned there? Jesus Christ. Okay, Logos is uh, referred to as Jesus, the one who is deity, the eternal God, God who became uh, flesh. Okay, and we looked, uh, we studied a few of the words there, we studied what it meant uh, the word dwelt, okay, we talked about it as a tabernacle, uh, the Old Testament tabernacle, basically God just, you know, uh, among his people, uh, revealing who he is and what he does. So God living and moving with his people, we see that in the Old Testament, when he lived and moved with his people along with them, even as they uh, traveled through the wilderness, the desert, and, you know, uh, the incarnation, we see that God dwelling with mankind, okay? Uh, God dwelling means tabernacle, coming and dwelling. Then we looked at the word glory, okay? What do we understand by this word glory? Glory means when Jesus lived on the earth, what kind of glory he manifested? Yes, thank you. At least one soul in the class knows. Uh, he uh, manifested his sonship glory uh, so when uh, when he, i mean as god what is his glory glory that he has the glory of the sun okay the glory of deity which means when he became a, a man he gave up that glory we'll study that in, in a little more detail okay and uh, uh, so we looked at which passage talks about this about Jesus having his sonship glory, giving up his glory as God, as deity. Hebrews 1? No. 
very important john chapter john chapter 1 was 14 and even john chapter 14 remember i read john chapter 14 please turn to john chapter 14 very important okay what do we see in john chapter 14 sorry john chapter 17 okay what is john chapter 17 talking about the whole chapter jesus is high priestly prayer okay and in that we see in verse um you know um in verse um, 22 he gives us that glory okay and um where does he say give me back the glory that i had even before the creation of the world Verse 5, yeah. And he says, hmm. Yes, uh, John chapter 17, verse um, 5 says, And now, Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So thank you, Nina, John. John chapter 17, uh, we see in John chapter 17, Jesus um, telling the Father that he's completed his work and to give him back the glory that he had as deity. And in John chapter um, uh, 20, 17, verse 22, he says, uh, the glory which you have given me, which is the, what glory? Sonship glory. He's given that to all of us. Okay, so all of us can manifest the glory, the sonship glory. And in that sense, we can do signs miracles and wonders okay and what is the meaning of glory manifesting the glory of god means what what's the meaning of manifesting the glory of god manifesting the power of god when jesus manifested the glory of god what did he do he shined as he was Okay, so what are the two things? I kept repeating this. Manifesting the glory of God means, or when we manifest the glory of God means, you know, we're manifesting who God is and what he does. Okay, please write that down. Manifesting the glory of God means manifesting who God is and what he does. So who God is means what? His nature. We are manifesting His nature. How do we manifest His nature? Through the, through the power of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. Okay? So manifesting the glory of God basically means two things. Who God is and what He does. Okay? Who God is is manifesting His nature, His, his, his characteristics. Okay? That is manifested through the fruit of the Spirit in us. And what God does is what? What does it mean? What God does means the signs, miracles, and wonders. Okay, what God does. And how do we manifest that? To the, yes, the power of the Holy Spirit, but to the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So the fruit of the Holy Spirit and the uh, manifest the nature of God. The, and when we uh, when we display the fruit of the Spirit, we manifest who God is. Uh, when we flow uh, in the gifts of the Spirit, we basically manifest what God uh, does. Okay, so that is manifesting the glory of God. So we, uh, when Jesus walked on the earth, he walked in the sonship glory, but he manifested the nature and the characteristics of God. And he also did signs, miracles, and wonders through which we know who God is and what he does. Okay. And Jesus has given us that sonship glory. Because how do we know that? John chapter 17, verse 22. He has given us that glory. Okay. And then we looked at Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. And we uh, look at two important facts. What are the two important facts that we can... Um, uh, Take out from Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Jesus is the 
Jesus is the, look at your notes, brightness of God's glory, and he is the express image of God's person. Okay, so brightness of God's glory means what? Jesus, the brightness of God's glory means what? What is the meaning of Jesus is the Jesus is the brightness of God's glory? What does it mean? It basically he represented who God is. He manifested who God is. Okay, how did he manifest who God is? How did he manifest the glory of God? Through his works, through his nature. Okay, who God is and what he does, who Jesus is and what he does. Okay, so when he showed forgiveness, compassion, kindness, love, he was manifesting the nature of God. He was manifesting who God is. When he did signs, miracles and wonders, he was manifesting the uh, what God can do, the power of God. Okay, so it does not mean that Jesus is the brightness of God's glory, it means he was shining so bright that, you know, like a tube light, like this, this light that's just falling on my face, you know, that brightness compared to all of you, the light is not falling on you. It's not that, you know, he had this aura, this radiance around him, like, you know, we see that halo of light around him. No. It's what is the meaning of he is the brightness of God's glory he basically manifested. What is the meaning of manifested? Showing, expressing, okay, uh, very evident. Uh, so manifesting the nature and the character of God and what God um, does. Okay, And Jesus is the express image of God's person means what? Express image of God's person means what? The exact image, yes, the perfect image, the perfect imprint. We look at different uh, versions of uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. Okay, uh, he's the exact representation of his being, and uh, in reality, he represents him. Okay, so now I know that none of you have gone through your notes again. Okay, that's very sad. Okay, anyways, we'll continue. I'll continue telling you, but it's left up to you all to read. Okay, so uh, he Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 says he's the image of the invisible God. Okay, and 2 Corinthians 4 says he's the image of God. And then we looked at the seven steps of incarnation, the seven steps in the incarnation. Uh, which verse did we look at? Which chapter and verses? Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Very, very important. Uh, two passages of scripture is John chapter 1, okay, verses 1 to 3 and verse 14. And then you have Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. And also Hebrews uh, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. So you can remember John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Okay, and Philippians chapter... Uh, two verses six to eight very very important okay so uh we, we are looking at the steps in the incarnation in philippians chapter two verses six to eight so i want all of you to please turn in your bibles to philippians chapter two verse six to eight also in your notes so that you can follow and understand okay uh, so can somebody read that please quickly take the mic and read it just keep passing the mic one after the other so you can keep yeah. Philippians 2, chapter 2, 6 to 8. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bound servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross. Amen. Thank you. So here, the first thing we see is Jesus is talking here about Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God. Okay. The second step is Christ, uh, uh, you know, he did not consider it to be equal with God. Uh, you know, um, 
The third thing was Christ was equal with God. The fourth, he made himself of no reputation. Okay, the fifth one is in the form of a bond servant. Sixth one, he came in the likeness of man. The seventh one, he was found in the appearance of man. And last week I explained to you what it means. You know, Christ was in the form of God. So when we talk about that, that Jesus Christ was in the form of God, you know, this form is not something that we think of as a shape. You know, when we think, when you use the word form, we think of um, the shape of something. But in the ancient Greek word, the word that is used here is morphe. Okay. The word morphe had none of this idea. You know, it does not have the idea of, uh, you know, when we talk about form as thinking of it as, you know, shape of something. But the word morphe basically means essence or the essential nature or the character. Okay. So when it says here that Christ was in the form of God, it means that he had the basic essence or the basic characteristics, the nature, the attributes of God, the attributes or the nature uh, of deity. Okay. So it's not just an outward appearance, the outward form, but it's talking about the essential nature. Okay. And does not imply any physical shape or image. But the Greek word used here is morphe, uh, you know, uh, which talks about the essential nature or the characteristic or the attribute. So Jesus had the nature, the attributes of uh, God. If there were those, if, if the Greek word schema was used here, then it would talk about the outward form. So it's not the Greek word schema, S-C-H-E-M-A, but it's the Greek word morphe, M-O-R-P-H-E. Okay, so when you talk about schema, it means the outward form which changes, you know, from time to time and from circumstances to circumstances. But the Greek word here is morphe, which is talking more about the basic essence, the very moral fiber. That, that means Jesus had the very nature, the essence, the characteristics, the attributes of deity. Okay, so that is the meaning of Christ was in the form of God. That mean, does not mean that he had a form of God, means in the shape of God, because we said God is spirit, but here is basically talking about his basic attributes, his nature, and his characteristics. Okay. The next thing is Christ was equal with God. We already studied this in, in detail in chapter two. Okay. He's equal with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. The third thing is he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. God. Now, the, if you look at it in the Greek, this word uh, consider is not uh, uh, is not mentioned as consider, but the literal Greek reads that it, it uh, did not deem, D-E-E-M. There's no word called consider in the, when you translate it in the, uh, from the Greek to the English, but it says did not deem. Deem means basically consider, regard, suppose, think. So he did not consider or he did not regard, he did not uh, uh, you know, suppose he did not think on being equ equal with God. He did not consider it being equal, equal, uh, equal with God as something to grasp or to hold on to. Okay. So this whole phrase in the ancient Greek, okay, if you study this verse in Greek, uh, this phrase has the idea of something uh, being grasped or clung on to so you cling on to somebody or something for dear life you know when you are falling off you know you cling on to the railing or to the tree or you know to a piece of uh, ledge or something like that so you know it's so the ancient greek word for this phrase has this whole idea of something being grasped you you grasp something in your hand you cling on to something so it it basically means that jesus did not hold on to or he did not just cling on to the privileges of deity okay but he was willing to give it up okay so the ancient greek word for robbery here means you know it's basically a treasure uh, to be clutched or to be grasped or to be held on to uh, and retained at all you know at all hazards when whenever you go through any difficulties whatever challenges you face uh, so here it means that he did not consider it 
you know, to hold on to, to grasp, to clutch, or to, you know, just hold on to, uh, you know, him being equal with God, but he was willing to give it up. Okay, did you understand? Yes? Okay, I'll repeat that again. Um, he did not consider it to be equal with God. He did not want to hold on to his equality. He did not want to just cling on to it. He didn't want to just, you know, hold on to it like to dear life. But, you know, he was willing to give it up. He was willing to give up uh, his uh, privileges of his deity, uh, willing to not just hold on to it, but willing to lay it aside, willing to give it up. So the ancient Greek word for robbery means, you know, it's a treasure, it's something that you value, you know, um, that you, you know, hold on to very, very, very closely um, and you keep it at any cost, even though you go through any difficulties, harm, you know, you, you're not willing to uh, let go, okay? But here, you know, he did not consider to that to hold on to his equality with God, hold on to his glory of deity. He was just willing to give it up, okay? At any cost, he was just willing to give it up. Now, did you understand it better? Yes, all of you are able to understand? Yes, no? Yes, some of you are still looking dazed. Okay, basically you need to understand that, you know, um, glory is something that was of deity, is something that, you know, God lives in unapproachable light. It is his glory, his awesomeness, his splendor, his whole nature, his whole, whole being. But Jesus was willing to lay aside that, okay? His equality with God, he was willing to lay aside when he took on humanity okay even though jesus was co-equal with god okay and um, he had the right to be honored and worshipped as god but he did not hold on to this glorious uh privilege this heavenly privilege he was willing to give it up so when he came down on this earth he gave up his his glory as deity he took on the sonship glory which means he was willing to give up this whole honor and privilege of, uh, you know, of doing away with all the honor, the worship that was due to him. He was willing to give it up, not hold on to this privilege. He was willing to let go of it. But here, when we say that, you know, uh, he, he emptied himself, it does not mean that, um, you know, he emptied himself of God, of deity does not mean that, you know, Jesus gave up all of his nature, attributes, characteristics, his glory, his honor, his privileges, and he took on humanity. Yes, he took on humanity in the fullest sense. Okay, he was fully human. At the same time, he was fully God as well. He was fully God in, this, uh, in every way. Uh, but he was willing not to exercise and express his divine attributes. Okay, that you need to remember. Okay, he, even though he was fully man, he was fully God, he was willingly, he refrained, he stopped. Refrain means, just, you know, not exercising, not using, just willingly stop exercising and expressing his divine attributes. Okay, that's there in your notes. I think you can please underline it. It's very important. Okay. Um, when we read this verse, he says, he made himself of no reputation. Uh, in the literal Greek Bible translates this as he emptied himself. So some theologians, some people say, you know, Jesus, when he lived on this earth, he was not fully God. And they quote the scripture passage from Philippians chapter 2. And they say, see, look here, he says he emptied himself. Okay, that's in the literal Greek translation. But here in the NKJV, he says he made himself of no reputation. But what did he, what does it mean when he made himself of no reputation? Or what does it mean when he emptied himself? He did not empty himself of all of his nature, attributes, characteristics of him being God. It basically means he, you know, when he emptied himself, he voluntarily descended from one rank or dignity or position. Okay, so his rank, position and dignity, that is what he, 
you know, he lowered himself. He gave up. He set aside. He did not set aside his nature and his attributes. Okay, what did he, uh, he set aside? He set aside his rank or his dignity, which means he did not empty himself of his deity or any of his attributes. Uh, but he uh, he did not lay aside his essential nature as as God, all of his attributes of God, but he willingly refrained from exercising and expressing his divine attributes and nature. So what is the divine attributes and nature of him being sovereign, eternal, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient? Basically three things, omnipotence, his omniscience, and his um, omnipresence. That is what he refrained from exercising and expressing he laid but he laid aside his position of equality with god okay that is when we we know that he gave up his glory okay john chapter 17 that we read you know uh, john chapter 17 verse 5 you know he says now O father glorify me together with yourself with the glory which i had with you before the world was so before his incarnation jesus had the glory of God. He had the glory of deity, the glory that God has. He had that in himself. Okay, but when he lived here on this earth, when he walked here on this earth, he did not walk with that glory. Why did not he why did he not walk with that glory? Why didn't he not exercise that uh, glory of deity? Yes. Please speak into the mic and slowly, Sean. Thank you. Uh, then there would be no point for him to coming and showing that uh, he lived as human beings. Uh, uh, as he, he as he came, uh, he came to be an example for us. Uh, for us, if he had or if he came in and saying that we, you know who I am, you know I am the most uh, most high, the son, son of God. If he came with that type of attitude, or that type of uh, thing, if he came with his sovereigns, he came all of his authority. Then there would be no point with God sending him down and uh, showing that how even though you are human, you can st uh, you, even though he came uh, he came down he gave all this the, the things up all his authority and all he came to be human he gave let, let us as an example for us to follow. Okay. Yeah. So okay. There be no point of that. Thank you. Why did Jesus not uh, walk on the earth with his uh, glory of deity? Because the limitations of the flesh, okay? Anyone can answer, in-person students, on online students as well? Okay. Okay, so we can say that uh, when uh, when we are tempted, we can say that he he was not tempted because he was divine. Okay, he said want to set an example for us. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Here, uh, Nina John says he dwells in unapproachable light. See, he dwells in unapproachable light who no man has seen and who no man can ever see. Scripture says that, right? Uh, so if he came in his sonship glory, he would not be able to see him. He would not be able to, even if he, you know, lives and, you know, manifests the nature and the attributes of God, we can't see it because he's deity. He's in that, in that glory. He lives in unapproachable light who no man can see. So if he came in his deity, his glory as, as God, we can't see him, we can't approach him, we can't touch him, we can't speak to him. You know, uh, it would be impossible for us to even know who, and the whole purpose of incarnation would have been uh, pointless, would be useless, because again, God is unapproachable, we can't see him, uh, we can't understand his ways, what he's doing, why is he doing um, we can't have that, you know, that that close, uh, tangible relationship with him. So he gave it up willingly um, for our sake. He made the choice for you and me. He laid aside his power and the glory of deity uh, so that you and I can see and understand and know who 
God is. So incarnation was not just for God to come down and die on the cross. He could have just come that, come and done that, but it's basically to come and understand mankind, uh, to be that mediator between God and man, uh, for us to see him and model him and to know that when you know, when Jesus could live like this, when he could overcome temptation, when he could be sinless, when the power of sin, you know, was broken over his life and power of sin had no, uh, the, the sin had no power over his life, even I can live like that. When Jesus can do all of these signs, miracles and wonders, when he can manifest the gifts of the spirit, when he can manifest the fruit of the spirit, even I can do that. And how was it all possible? Because we could see it with our Eyes. And that is the evidence that they had. So even if you look at what John says, you know, um, John writes and says, you know, we have seen with our eyes, you know, we have witnessed, we have seen, we look at it, you know, we we'll study that even um, uh, in Acts, when Peter is talking and giving his, his sermon after the Pentecost and the other sermons that he's given, he's saying, you've seen him, you've heard him, you've known him. And you are the ones who killed him. You've also seen that he rose again and he manifested himself after his resurrection. So all of these things would be impossible if Jesus came in his glory as deity. All of you able to understand? All of you with me? Yes? Okay. So here we see that, you know, uh, 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 Jesus, you know, he gave up his, uh, his glory, the glory that he had before the incarnation. And during this, his life on this earth, you know, he walked as a, a man. He lived the sonship glory. But once he ascended back to the Father, he was restored back with his glory as deity. Okay? He did not, again, when he ascended and sat, sat at the right hand of the Father, he did not continue with the sonship glory, but he received back his glory of deity, that glory of um, God, okay? And this glory of God that we're basically talking about is his position of equality with God. So even when you're talking about, you know, Jesus laid aside his glory, is also uh, is not talking that he gave up this honor and privileges of being honored and worshipped, uh, of walking in the uh, glory of deity, but also his position of equality with God at the Father's right hand. So it says he did not consider equality with God uh, something to be hold on to, something to be held on to, something to be grasped on to, but he was willingly willing to lay it aside during uh, incarnation. So, you know, um, uh, when, when Jesus walked on the earth, okay, he was all God, he was all man, but he made a choice for you and me to lay aside the glory of deity and to submit himself to the Father. So that means he lowered himself in terms of rank and dignity, okay? Now rank is he is no longer equal with the Father, no longer the right hand of the Father. He lowered himself and became a human being. Okay, and he laid aside his power uh, as well of um, of um, of God, and he submit, and also he lowered himself in the rank means he lowered himself of uh, you know submitting to the Father's will, submitting wholly to the Father's will, living in total submission and obedience to the uh, Father. Okay, but he he had the nature and the characteristics of God, but he willingly refrained from exercising and expressing it. Okay, so all of these terminologies, very, very important for us to know. So it's there in your notes. Please underline those sentences. Important for you to know that you know, he willingly um, laid, what did he willingly lay aside? And, uh, you know, he, what did he have? He had his uh, uh, nature as deity, but he refrained from exercising and expressing his divine attributes. And that is of omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresence. Uh, All of you are able to understand? That is why, you know, uh, towards the end of uh, his life here on earth, uh, as we read in John chapter 14, verse 28, somebody can turn to John chapter 14, verse 28, please. Can somebody read that? Please pass on the mic, uh, Sean. To somebody who can read. Read, read. John chapter 14, verse 28. 
John chapter 14 verse 28 you heard me say I'm going away and I'm coming back to you if you loved me you would be glad that I'm going to the father for the father is greater than I thank you so here we see there's a great sense of joy in Jesus returning back to the father because of the glory that he would regain glory that he would receive back that of deity okay and then he took on the form of a bond servant he willingly also took on the role of a servant okay uh, and we know that even isaiah prophesies that remember last week we studied uh, so, uh, the servant songs i said there are seven servant songs in the book of isaiah you know we studied one of the servant songs uh, basically talking about uh, the servant is jesus christ okay the prophecies regarding the messiah who is jesus christ and as a servant jesus was willingly uh, you know uh, submitting or willingly uh, uh, you know uh, he was willing to submit to the uh, father he was willing to offer his uh, obedience to his father he was willing uh, to to offer his devotion his service uh, 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 to the master to his father and also to do the will of the uh, father like we read in uh, hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 can somebody read hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 and john chapter 5 verse 30 hebrews 10 7 then i said behold i have come come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will O oh god yes so here we see that jesus is willing to do the will of the father john chapter 5 verse 30. i can of myself of nothing as i heard i judge and my judgment is righteous because i do not seek my own will but the will of the father who sent me yes okay so here we see that um, you know through these verses we see that he was he took on the form of a bond servant, which means um, a, a servant who's willingly, um, you know, what's it mean a bond servant? It's a bond slave or a bond servant is somebody who is, you know, submitting for the rest of their life to their master, okay, for life. Okay, so, you know, uh, slaves had a freedom to be set free uh, 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 in the sixth year and the seventh year. They were willing to be, um, you know, in the law of, what God gave to Moses, gave to Moses, you know, they could be free, but if they wanted, they love their master, their master is very good to them, you know, they want to continue to serve their master, then they have to, you know, they make a bond and that bond is like they pierce their ear, you know, so when they pierce the ear, um, it shows that, you know, they are uh, slaves or servants for life. So here, bond servant, even uh, Paul writes, when he writes his epistles, in various epistles, he begins, you know, Paul, a bond servant of Christ Jesus. That means Paul is saying, you know, I'm here as a servant, not because I'm made a servant uh, uh, by God, but I'm willingly you know, uh, willing to, uh, you know, exercise my will to be a servant, to serve, to be in complete obedience, to do the will for what Christ Jesus has taken hold of me. So bond servant. So Jesus here was willingly submitting to the will of the Father in total obedience and in devotion and service to his Father. Then he came in the likeness of men, okay, um we're continuing to look at uh, um, philippians chapter 2 verse 7 so please follow in with your notes and uh, the bible okay he came in the likeness of men that means um uh, he 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 was uh human in every uh, sense of the way he was uh his humanity was genuine uh in every aspect he was um human he submitted himself to all of the human limitations weaknesses frailties human experiences okay and in reality he was totally uh, human we'll study about his human humanity his humanness in the next chapter okay uh, the next one he was found in appearance as a man okay so uh, as i mentioned you know um, when incarnation was one way 
uh, where, you know, we as human beings could see God, you know, we could reach out to him, we could touch him, uh, we could speak to him, we could uh, relate to him, we can, you know, see, touch, handle, uh, relate uh, to God and thus relating to him, we could, you know, understand and relate to the very heart of the Father, okay, Father God, the, the first person of the Trinity. So the second person of the Trinity manifested the first person of the Trinity, the deity. Uh, and so uh, because of, you know, him being God becoming human, we could see, touch, feel, handle, uh, and relate to the father heart of God. And all this was possible because of incarnation. Okay. So these are the seven steps in incarnation that we um, can um, receive or, uh, you know, can understand from Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to uh, 8. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? Any questions? Yes, Nina. Yeah, just uh, is it okay if I unmute and speak? You can hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, when we, that particular verse which says that we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who was tempted in every way as we are, but was without sin. So when we say he was tempted in every way as we are, what does that really mean? He was tempted as we were, we are tempted. Uh, but uh, there's not a but, <laughs> it's, I'm just trying to understand it better. So uh, uh, he did not, I mean, he continued to still be God also. No, That is what we have been learning in all this, even though he was uh, equal, he did not think it robbery to be equal. And he made himself of no reputation and took on the form of a bond servant. So, um, so he retained, I mean, he still was fully God. Then how could he be tempted? How could he be tempted? He was fully, uh -huh. he was fully man, just like he was fully God. He was fully uh -huh. man in every sense, in the fullest sense. He had uh -huh. full nature of man. Uh, at the same time, he had the full essence and nature of uh, of divinity and of uh -huh. humanity. But he refrained from exercising his, uh, you know, his nature and attributes um, of divinity. Uh, but mm -hmm. the fullest sense, again, he was fully man. And just like we were, are tempted, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, you know, of yes. course, only one temptation of Jesus is mentioned for us in Matthew chapter 4. But mm -hmm. uh, he would have gone through various other temptations. Also, we see in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, there was such a temptation to not do the will of the Father. Uh, to not drink the cup, but he was saying, he finally said, you know, here I am, you know, willing to uh, do, uh, take this cup away from me, but uh, not my will, let your will be uh, done. So in every sense, he was, you know, he was tempted in the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, but he overcame temptation. And thus he sets himself as, as a model, as an example for us to uh, follow as well. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes. Uh, but he did not overcome, sorry, Sean, he did not overcome his temptation uh, because he was, uh, he exercised his omnipotence uh, because that is what he refrained from exercising. From yeah, I was trying to understand that. But in the sense, he, when he laid aside those privileges, we were just uh, learning that, which meant his omnipresence uh, and omnipotence and the other one, omniscience. Yes. So that means he uh, kind of refrained from using any of those attributes, mm -hmm. isn't it? While he was on the earth? Yes. He did That's not use. In the omniscience, he says, I only yeah. say, do what my father What my father me. tells me, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Do okay. and all of those things, yes. Okay, thank you. And uh, yes, omni, uh, his omnipotence as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, um, even, you know, when we're talking about he laid down his sonship glory, you know, mm -hmm. if uh, he was not, uh, if he had that sonship glory, nobody could crucify him on the cross. Right. Uh, if he, uh -huh. he exercises omnipotence, nobody could crucify him on the 
Correct. And the yeah, whole yeah, yeah. explanation would have been of no point. It would be pointless and without any uh, sense of value. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I hope I thank you. Question? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Sean. Uh, Ma'am, what I didn't was I couldn't understand is like we know that he came, uh, he was uh, half human, but how can you say not that? Not half, he was, fully not that. God, <laughs> fully man. <laughs> 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 so, yes. Not like Spider Man and uh, He Man, you know, suddenly they are Spider Man, suddenly they are uh, the human beings. No, no. Yeah, so we know that he is fully man. But I understand how he can be fully God once he given up all his privileges. The only thing, I mean, he know we know that he is the son of God. That's what he said. But he didn't show that. He uh, did not give up his privileges. He laid it he aside. Laid out. He laid aside his role and the dignity of being honored and worshipped and of the sonship glory, his equality with the father. He laid it aside. He kept okay. it aside. He had all of the nature, attributes, and character of God, but he refrained from yes. using it. So it was there, but I didn't use it. Yes, he okay. refrained from using it. And another For thing example, is... uh, if I'm the CEO of a company, uh, I know many CEO, uh, some CEOs of companies who have different privileges, but they don't exercise and use that uh, that privilege. You know, they can use it, but they don't. They just refrain from using it. Just they want to be like a common or like a common, any other common person. Yes. Another thing I had is about to talk about manifestation. We talked about two things: about what God is and uh, who God is. Sorry, who and God what is? He does. Yes, I I was not even understand like what he does. What does that mean exactly? What he does means yeah. his the, the, works, the works, science, miracles, and wonders. Okay. His miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, uh, cleansing the lepers. Making the blind see, the deaf hear, the mute speak, this works. Who God is, you can make that uh, correction, who God is and what he does. Any other questions? Yes, give it to him. We you know like uh, God, he is a spirit, right? God, God is spirit, spirit and uh, we know he don't have gender. Yes. But like uh, why God came as, why, like when Jesus came, like why he came like a, a human man, why not a woman? As a woman, a good question, because in the culture of those times, a rabbi was not a woman. They would cons A woman was not given that privileges and honor as a man in the Jewish society. Okay. And uh, uh, they were they were considered as you know lowly people, uh, and only rabbis who could teach, would preach, and had the freedom to even move around and go around. So because of the cultural setting, um, in that sense, you know, uh, God became a man, and he could die on the cross. Like, uh, his uh, gender is male. That's why he came like me. No. Yes. Anyone else has any questions? Yes, give it to Rin, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pastor, like uh, the, the Trinity, like God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they are one. So, um, so what does it mean like this line where it says that when Jesus ascended back to heaven, he sat at the right hand of God? So there's a, I mean, if there are one, why is there a right hand of God for Jesus to sit at the right hand of God? Um, Jesus to sit at the right hand of God is again talking about his continuing role as, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a mediator, as a priest for, uh, uh, of, uh, you know, for us as his role is not yet completed in that fullest sense. He he died on the cross, but he continues to be our mediator and our um, high priest. But then he also is is he receives back his glory as deity, and we will see him as God. But for us, uh, for for the for the for the deity does not really um, uh, they have, don't have this confusion who sits where. It's only with our human mentality. It's like, 
oh, he's sitting there, he's sitting there, so he's the head, he, she's the tail, or, you know, blah, blah, blah. But for that, they, they have no kind of, uh, uh, kind of um, uh, contradiction or confusion in who is sitting where and position and power and all of those things because they work in perfect unity. They are one, right? So they don't have all of these concepts in their mind like we human beings have. <laughs> yes. But right hand of the Father is, again, we are also seated at the right hand of God. Uh, it's talking about our spiritual position, where we are to identify, because you know, as a right hand of God, we are in a spiritual position where we have authority and power over principalities and powers and forces of darkness. And so we use, our use and exercise our authority and power. But when it comes to uh, God sitting on the right hand, it also is talking about his continued role as a mediator, as a high priest for us as human beings. Okay. Okay. We'll stop here. Uh, we've passed two minutes of our time. We'll uh, meet at 10.02. Okay. We'll meet you after the break. Thank you.